Welcome back to the channel. In this video, from what I've briefly read through to highlight everything, this seems as though it's the best bit of news we're going to receive for Outriders. And as long as they stick to it, and that is as long as they stick to it, these changes are going to make this game much, much better for a lot of players that are experiencing issues. So we'll jump straight into it because we have quite a lot to go through. But this is the Outriders latest news and known issues, May to June. Uh, so it says, hello everyone. Uh, we've been active in the community every single week since long before launch already. But we've never properly outlined specifically when you should be able to expect news by. Which has left to confusion on occasion. We aim to provide news in the form of a thread or thread update such as this one every Thursday as a minimum. Please do treat the Thursday dev news check-in simply as the main but not exclusive touch point for when you can next expect to hear something significant. It's just for community news and patches may still release on a Tuesday or other days in a certain weeks. Social channels will now also slowly start sharing more fun game dev unrelated posts on non-dev news days as we also want to celebrate the community a bit more. If you have any fun or interesting content you're keen to see, let us know. Now let's get into it. So, it's taken them eight weeks to acknowledge that they have been very slow on what they've been sharing, and this is not acceptable. I mean, there's one thing acknowledging it, and then there's another thing actually, like, moving forwards and sticking to what you have said, because at the end of the day, yes, this looks like a positive, but are these developers going to stick to it? because everything they've told us before now has just been lies. So there is that little like part of me that doesn't trust it still. However, if they do go ahead with this, and they stick to what they have said, then this is just positive for the game. But people have to understand that there are issues regarding them communicating and that being acceptable and oh we've acknowledged the issues yeah we're focusing on them like you need to understand that players are still going to have a negative point of view because of how this game has been treated in the first eight weeks so it carries on here to say we have not done a good enough job of explaining or surfacing certain mechanics and decisions in the game to players so they know that they have left the players to just fend for themselves but whether or not they go ahead with this is a completely different story so they've also carried on to say, planning to, over the coming weeks, create a series of threads that will shed a bit more light on how certain systems are designed to work in Outriders, shared via the in-game newscast system so you won't miss them. So when you load up your game, I think if you're on Xbox, you just press like right trigger, it's got the news at the bottom right corner. Widespread and better understanding is what they're aiming for of these mechanics will make the game more fun to you, but will also help us identify key pain points more accurately. So this is a few initial focuses for further discussions. I mean, this whole thing is highlighted because even as we scroll down here, it's pretty much all highlighted because it's very, very important to cover. So starting off at the very top, damage reduction and survivability mechanics. Outriders has a number of mechanics, including shields, armor, resistance, spike damage protection, health gate, and more that all work together to calculate how squishy or tanky your particular character is in the face of certain damage. And I just want to point out to the people in the comments, it's not necessarily to do with players' builds. I've seen so many people say, oh, you haven't got this esports ready god rolled build, and that's why you're running all this offensive stuff and you don't have any defense, so you're going to be squishy and get one-shotted all the time. That is not the case. Players will still experience issues because the damage mitigation was never fully fixed. They only did things to the broodmothers to stop this happening. It's every enemy in the game that actually has the capability of one-shotting you, even though there's a mechanic to prevent that, or supposed to prevent that, because... They're, like, they haven't coded or changed the coding to fix the enemies. What basically happens is you get hit like two or three times, but you only ever see the one hit. So you're going to take, if an enemy can hit you for 10,000 damage, you're going to get hit for 30,000 damage, but you'll only see one attack. So they're actually attacking way more than they should. But I've noticed now it's not just the enemies. People are being one-shotted and losing like 20k health from the explosive <laughs> barrels that are placed around maps. So it's the environment that's now attacking the players as well as the enemies. So they've said here, however, as mentioned above and observed in a few discussions recently, 
These mechanics are not 100% clear and in some cases, example, spike damage protection, death protection and invincibility are secret mechanics within hidden cooldowns, or with hidden cooldowns. Understanding these mechanics is a key aspect of understanding damage mitigation or one-shot kill instances and related issues. So the legendary drop rates, which is something a lot of players have complained about, and I totally agree with the backlash about it, because they did sit there and say they don't, they know players don't have the time anymore to sit there and grind 300 hours for one item. I've seen a comment recently, someone spent 450 hours in the game, doesn't have a death shield. They're actually starting to think that the death shield drop is bugged for them. I mean, it could be the case, you never ever know. But it does seem to drop for most players that have played the game. But this person's done 450 hours and still has never seen a death shield. But just because other players have seen it drop doesn't mean that it's not bugged. It's a different experience for every player. But onto legendary drop rates. We are aware that some players, uh, I think a lot of players, are unhappy with legendary drop rates as they currently are. This is a topic that across various game modes and difficulty levels includes many layers and further questions. To that end, we are planning to share more information about legendary drop rate mechanics in the future to help you understand the system a bit better and to help make your farming more targeted and less frustrating. So with them saying they want to make your farming more targeted, there must be specific mechanics in the game regarding the legendary drops, but that doesn't mean anyone's right or wrong. We have nothing confirmed from the devs at this time, but it could just mean that it's not purely based on RNG. And I mean... If you look at the video I've done for the story I ran through on PC using a trainer, if you look at that, I got a lot of cannonball stuff. I also did the expeditions. I don't know if the video's up now or the when it's going to go up, but the expeditions also provided a lot of cannonball stuff. The cannonball gear seems to have a very, very high drop rate. So, like, drop chance, like, weight on the drops or the whatever... It has a, like, it's a very, very common drop compared to other things in the game. So it could be that certain expeditions have a better chance of dropping certain things. We don't know at this current time. Nothing's been confirmed. However, I did see an email that was shared by a developer saying apparently the best way to get the Death Shield is to kill Yagak at the end of the story. So not Eye of the Storm or anything like that. The end of the story and do it on a minimum of like World Tier 12. And apparently that has a higher chance of dropping the Death Shield compared to Expeditions. So we don't know. As they've stated, it's all over the place at the moment. But they do hope, I mean, longer than eight weeks after release to clear some of this stuff up. This should have been out there from the get-go. But they said, note that this is just an initial step regarding this matter, but it's required for us to make informed choices. So they're going to be doing a lot of balancing, and it moves us on to the balancing. I actually wrote a good 3,400 word draft for a thread about balancing in the week following our bullet build rebalance, uh, you mean nerf, to respond to the concerns raised by the community at the time. This thread explained how we wanted to go about balancing, why the bullet build changes were necessary, and it included an FAQ to answer just about every balancing design question you had or have. Why were there only nerfs? Why is balancing even required? Which players do we look at when considering balancing? Are the big streamers? Uh, and many more questions. It also talked about the difficulty and learning curve that we had in mind when designing Outriders and Expeditions in particular. However, the subsequent issues around inventory restoration and damage mitigation made such a thread quite out of touch to post at the time. I'm hoping to be able to revisit this draft and share a more current version of it in the future to help better explain our initial vision around balancing. Regarding further balancing, we first want to see how things shake up regarding our latest patch, since damage mitigation issues or malfunctioning mods could push the meta in certain directions. Not because something is unbalanced, but because players might not have been finding certain aspects of play reliable enough to use consistently. And yes, we'd want to focus primarily on buffs, not nerfs. So we'll have to see if they stick to that one, because we know these developers, they nerfed the game within the first week, so we don't know if that can actually be trusted... I really, really hope that they do buff other things and not just keep nerfing. But with them saying, see how the meta's been pushed in certain directions, I feel Moaning Winds is going to be nerfed and I really don't like that. So we have a couple of extra notes. Next patch. Our next patch is currently undergoing testing. So with the damage mitigation, this took like three weeks. With the intent to release it in the latter half of next week, we will confirm this next week when testing wraps up. We will share specific patch notes with its release. 
So they are doing another patch, and it's, it's coming literally like shortly after the damage mitigation, so that is good. And they said, we know that our previous patch took uncomfortably long to release, but we do hope to be able to be patching the game much more frequently now. So they're basically saying because of the damage mitigation, because of the inventory restoration, that they uh, couldn't do any other work because that was their focus. But they've also told us they have a team that works on damage mitigation and stuff like that. Then they also have their rebalancing teams. So why couldn't their separate teams work on this stuff at the same time? They've said now that damage mitigation is out of the way. They want to start patching the game more frequently. But again, at the same time, it shouldn't even need patches or as many as they're releasing because the game should have been complete at launch. So again, this is like stuff we're going to have to keep our eyes on. And I've said it since the damage mitigation patch was released. I literally played one expedition to test it out. I am, however, over this weekend, if you guys actually see the video before the weekend, I am testing matchmaking, playing solo, drop pods and stuff, because I've heard now the players are getting legendaries at different rates through expeditions. And it was always, like for me at least, the case of if I was hosting the game or whatever, and I opened up the drop pods and got three legendaries. Everyone else in the game would get three. But apparently that's completely different now. So I'm going to have to do the testing. But I am planning to do that. And then the player appreciation package. This is currently undergoing testing. And I'll share more news around this as soon as we have a confirmed go live date. The tech for this package is based on the restoration script that we used, but needed additional coding as we are, for example, attempting to ensure the players would only receive a legendary weapon that they previously did not obtain. There are 46 legendary weapons in this game. They are trying to make sure their players will only receive one they haven't previously obtained. A lot of people have got every single legendary in the game. Some people are missing several. So it's going to be very mixed on the feedback like, regarding that. And not just that, they messed up with the restoration. So using that and then adding an additional coding when we know a lot of the coding in the game is broken, I just I don't personally look forward to that. I don't care what legendary weapon they want to give me. Like this appreciation package isn't going to come to me on PC because I played too late. But I'll get it on Xbox because I've had the game since launch and played since launch. And... I, I don't know. We're going to have to see what happens with it. But I mean, again, they're saying they want to patch this game more frequently. Now, all of a sudden, this player appreciation package is undergoing testing at the moment. And they announced it like, what, six, seven weeks ago or, or something like that? I, th I think it was when they actually nerfed the bullet builds. They announced it. So seven weeks ago. So I don't know why it's taken them so long, but what we're going to do now is move on to the known issues and issues that are still being investigated. So, trolls kicking other players at the end of expeditions. An upcoming patch will implement a feature that prevents players from engaging in this antisocial behaviour. That is a very, very good change. They are finally getting round to doing this. But they've said an upcoming patch. There could be several upcoming. We don't have a clue. So we don't know when this is going to come into place. We don't know if it's going to work properly. And I mean, they spent a long time, or so they say they did, spent a long time working on the game. So why did not a single person out of the teams working on the game think of this before they <laughs> launched the game? And why was this not a main focus? Because this is a very toxic thing to do in the game. You don't get anything out of it. You don't achieve anything. You can't take the player's loot that you've just kicked. But then we did also talk about it not necessarily being the players are being kicked out of the party because some players were saying they got booted but not having the pop-up that says kicked from the party. So it could have been server-related as well because a lot of people have randomly disconnected and also a lot of people are like being one-shot towards the end of expeditions. So it could be server-related. We don't know. I'm not saying that's 100% because there weren't a lot of people talking about being randomly kicked at the end of Expeditions when this first started coming about. But I'm glad they are finally working on it. I hope that it actually gets implemented in a polished way because it's just basically dickheads that just... I, I don't even know why they do it. I, I can't explain. But moving on to signing issues. Our latest patch implemented additional telemetry which will give us a better insight into the specific issues certain players might be facing. This telemetry will help us understand at what specific point of the process the signing for these players fails. Um... I mean, if you just take a look, it's at authenticating the sign-in. A lot of people can't get past authenticating. And um, 
And let's just say <laughs> the patch that implemented additional telemetry also <laughs> implemented additional sign-in issues because a lot more players that had never experienced sign-in issues before are now experiencing them. And some players that were are just having problems with it taking way longer than before to sign them in. And then we move on to multiplayer connectivity issues related to rubber banding and lag. An upcoming patch will implement better region-based matchmaking in order to improve the quality of connections players experience in multiplayer. This may lead to an initially longer wait for matchmaking to connect, but the sessions should then better of a better quality. Sessions should then better of a better... Okay, moving on. Players from different regions may still be matched after a certain period of time has passed. We are continuing to work on improving the multiplayer experience beyond this change as well. So please treat this as just one of an ongoing series of steps to improve this experience. I don't know why that part never highlighted. But crashes and memory leaks, upcoming patches will continue to address occurrences of these and improve the overall stability of the game. So now we have specific bugs. They've basically put two notes here. And I'm going to just go through these because we have quite a few. But then that's going to wrap the video up. It's been a long one. But all items being marked as new when entering a new gameplay session. Issue identified will be resolved in a future patch. Trickster movement impeded when using Cyclone skill and being stunned. Issue identified, resolved later on. Hell's Rangers items not appearing for players on the Epic Store. Identified, will be resolved. But the thing is with that, the Hell's Rangers items, people are having their Hell's Rangers items taken off them. So it's not that they're not appearing because players, I actually saw a picture of it. Someone had it in their inventory, logged off for 20 minutes, went back on and their Hell's Rangers, I think it's the Earthborn AR or something, I don't know what it's called. That got replaced with a level 1 rusty gun or, or something like that, that basically had no damage when their Earthborn AR was like level 44. So I, I don't know, they need to look into that further. They, you can't just go, we think we've identified the issue for this. It's literally just one issue that we've looked at. Uh, let's go and do a, a patch to resolve that. It doesn't work like that. You need to look at the bigger picture, like the damage mitigation. They just went and fixed Broodmothers because that's probably the biggest sort of like response or feedback they had for it. So they went and did that. But the damage mitigation is still an issue across other enemies because they never sorted them out as well. Then they said certain mods not working, in particular when you're the client during multiplayer sessions. This is currently being investigated as it may be related to specific latency thresholds. This may be part of the above mentioned bigger multiplayer connectivity issues investigation. So it's because Square Enix were tight with their servers. They went for very, very cheap servers and this caused a lot of issues in the game. So... Uh, Claps all round, uh, applauds, uh, well done Square Enix for uh, ruining People Can Fly's reputation even worse than they had already did it for themselves. Uh, scrap Grenade mod stops working after cutscenes, I just don't think that mod works at all, they're still investigating. Weapon mod Ravenous Locust doesn't deal damage if used together with the Weightlessness mod uh, being investigated. Players dying while a shield is active being investigated rather than the shield not properly mitigating damage. This issue may be caused by either the UI not catching up properly or it may be a case of certain shield mods continuing to proc their shield after death has occurred under certain edge cases. Uh, then they've got an example which I'm not interested in. Tricksters, Hunt the Prey doesn't turn a player towards an enemy's back if aiming down sights immediately after activation being investigated. I mean, the rest of these are being investigated besides one is being re-investigated. So, Devastator's Gravity Jump can cause a client player to get stuck. Devastator's Statue Set Bonus ends after 8 seconds, which is not stated in the description. Technomancer's Borealis Set, if that's how you pronounce it, not applying properly. Pyromancer's Feed the Flame skill may not properly proc Ash Effect in multiplayer. Revive functionality not working as intended during multiplayer sessions with high latency and packet loss. And uh, the one being reinvestigated is journal entries and pickups not appearing on secondary characters. And then the final one is damage blocked stat on expeditions result screen occasionally appears inconsistently or abnormally low. So that's being investigated as well. So there was a lot to cover, as you can see from the highlighted stuff. And this is their Thursday dev news. So hopefully once a week we get to come back, revisit, have a little dev news chat and stuff and see what they're talking about within the game. I mean, they should have started doing this stuff eight weeks ago, if you ask me, as soon as the game launched. They should have started talking about this and actually giving people insight as to how their bloody game works. But I mean, better late than never. Like, There's always uh, an opportunity to do this sort of stuff and I'm glad they're doing it eight weeks and not eight months down the line. But I also have a slight feeling they're doing this to give that false sense of hope to players that the game's going to be fixed, ready for when June comes and then they possibly announce DLC. 
However, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with all of this. As they said, later next week, they do hope to have a patch out and there'll be patch notes and stuff released around then. They hope to patch the game more often. The appreciation package is probably never being released. And yeah, there was a, a lot more that we had to cover. But what we're going to do is wrap the video up there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.